Hi students, welcome back to the online uh, video lectures on computer vision. Uh, in this video lecture, we would continue our discussion on perspective modeling. Uh, it is during the last uh, Zoom session, we started discussion about the perspective modeling. So if you don't uh, remember that or if you have not uh, uh, like gone through it, okay, then please, uh, the link will be there in the description of this YouTube video. So please go through it first and then come back here. And now we are going to continue our discussion on perspective modeling. So what I'll do is here I'll uh, briefly touch upon some of the things that we have already discussed and then proceed further. Okay, uh, let me, uh, just a minute, uh, let me mute this off. Okay, yeah, should be fine. Uh, right, so let me move on to a desktop sharing mode so that I could write things on my notebook and share that with you okay uh, yeah on the perspective projection okay so hope you all remember the uh, camera model uh, the pinhole camera model that we have discussed so let me quickly go through it again assume that so essentially we are looking at a 2d model instead of having xyz points where you have just xy points okay um, so <clears throat> assume that this is your center of projection. In other words, this you could think of it as the, mm, the hole through which the light is passing in the pinhole camera model. And assume that you have an object here. Okay, that's your object. And uh, mm, at the back of it, assume that your uh, the uh, screen or a sensor is there at the back of it. Okay, somewhere here. That's where you would like the projection to happen. Uh, and then what's going to happen now, this ray of light would, go, would pass through it, right? And would give you this as your object here. So this object gets recorded here, fine. And then uh, we can, let's say uh, this distance, we let's call this distance as F. And uh, this distance as D the distance to the object to the center of projection let's call this height as h and this as h naught you could notice that there are uh, let's call this point as a o capital a capital b okay and similarly o small a small b so there are two similar triangles so triangle o a b and triangle o small a small b are similar triangles right are similar triangles so what you could write there for example h naught using the properties of similar triangles h naught by h should be equal to f by d so that implies your h naught is equal to uh, f by d times f by d times h right now assume that in the same distance as f here okay this distance from the center to the left hand side is f so you consider the same distance f here and then this distance being again f here okay this is the second thing we are doing then what could you say about this height here so let me call it as h naught prime here uh, well uh, this again let me call this as o uh, uh, a prime for example here and this as B prime okay now you could see again uh, here O A B O A B and triangle O A B and triangle O A prime B prime are similar triangles right they are similar triangles so again you could uh, see here uh, with that uh, this both the distances make a note here distances are f there so that means uh, h naught prime by h naught is equal to f by f that's equal to 1 so your h naught prime is equal to h naught right so in the mathematical models from some from now on uh, you take this into consideration and uh, so what there is only one difference here suppose if you look at the ray coming okay 
in this direction okay the object here going through the object of projection if you take the projection at this point right what would happen it's same as this except that that inversion doesn't happen so the mathematical model that you would be using from now onwards for a the um, pinhole camera is the one which we discussed right now so instead of so let me quickly draw that again just that uh, part this is your axis okay assume that you had the object here of height h right and uh, so then this is your f same as the distance where you had the uh, screen on the back side and then what would happen this is your center of projection point o okay and you collect them that would give you this the same height but with without any inversion okay if you call it as what what was the variable we are calling h naught okay so h naught is equivalent to h naught is equivalent to uh, this distance whole distance being uh, okay let me just write this distance as well here uh, so this distance is h no sorry let's say call it as d because h is the height okay this d now h naught we have seen it now just now is equivalent to um, f by f over d times h that would give you the height okay so then um, if you go to 2d or 3d also the last video lecture we have discussed how things would uh, scale down okay or scale up de depending on where it is uh, okay so that where we got for example the if you want me to draw that part okay uh, for example one possible um, so 3d so if I could call it as uh, 3d perspective projection 3d perspective projection again please go through the previous zoom session for a detailed uh, discussion on it but i'll do here a quickly a revision um, which should be if you've gone through it this should be good enough right so that for example you consider this as your z axis okay and uh, uh, somewhere here you call this one part yeah in slides we had couple of different notations but let's see let's follow this okay assume that this is your y-axis okay then this is your x-axis and uh, uh, assume a point here which is I'm calling it with small x small y and small z okay here uh, I am using capital X, Y, Z here for denoting the axis, right? Now, so this is your center of projection O, and uh, this is those are the coordinates, right? And uh, this is the line connecting here. Now, what you are doing is uh, at a distance f, okay? Um, you are taking you 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 are taking a projection of that. So something like this, let me draw again, we need to imagine here 3D in 2D, okay. So this for example is the point you are getting here, okay. And assume that that's giving you this height here uh, instead of this original height here, okay. And let's call this, uh, so this is at a distance of F from the center of projection to for example the screen we are taking on this side okay this obviously for this point this is capital Z okay and let's call on this plane okay you have a plane parallel to the Z axis and uh, uh, that's there uh, at F okay uh, so essentially you are having it 2D so let's call this as X prime comma Y prime right 
uh, this uh, you, the, the relationship uh, you just need to consider a uh, couple of uh, similar triangles and do it I direct you to the slides that were discussed in the uh, previous zoom session but I would rather go with this intuitive um, intuitive expressions for that so what would be this x dash value like for example uh, that is similar to what you got here so here your f naught is uh, f the d is in fact uh, equal to z right so you would get f by z times the x value and y dash is equal to f by z times y okay uh, then uh, we want to have a matrix representation for uh, these transformations okay we tried doing that what's uh, uh, so how could you do that so for example I need one naive way of initial way to begin with this for example you could think of something like this x dash y dash okay something multiplied with x y z okay uh, what should you get here these were your expressions right so x dash equal to f by so some of you were suggesting in that session why not write f by g times x here nothing with y zero right and uh, mm, this is a two cross one this is a three cross two right all you need here is two cross three and y dash equal to f by z into y so this should get multiplied with this and then that's how that that is one possibility so what's the problem here okay what do we encounter here in writing it in this manner that's what we discussed in the uh, class so essentially uh, you have a division there okay division by z and z, uh, here in addition to that z is a, a parameter or a variable z is variable okay so that means uh, you have a nonlinear uh, matrix form there that implies you have a nonlinear uh, matrix which you don't want it so then you moved on to uniform coordinate system right that's what we did in the last class uniform coordinates how did we achieve that uh, so you this uh, division by z you postpone to the last step till then um, you uh, manage uh, with the rest of the things so for example um, you have let's say so uh, something like if I want x dash y dash this I am going to represent them as instead of that u v w okay and from here how do I get x dash y dash back from here my x dash would be equivalent to x dash is equivalent to u by w and y dash would be equivalent to v by w okay that's where I would uh, um, I would account for the, uh, taking the inverse of z and of course f also I could uh, incorporate there okay so this is what you would use well then how could you write that out in this manner uh, so let me so what should I get for example if I want to write it this way come back here my what's actually my x dash and y dash values here let's first write that okay from that we will get an idea on what to do so that's equivalent to f by z times x right and f by z times y now how about writing it as simply x y z by f so this is the transformation that you are going to do okay and uh, this would be equivalent to the values of u v and w 
right? And finally, once I get u v w in the last step, I would do u by w. That should give me x multiplied um, with f by z. And similarly, v by w should give me y multiplied with f by z, right? So that's all I need to achieve now. So let me try doing that now. So what I would like to get is u v w, okay? And uh, on this side, I have x, y, for example, z, okay? If I take it that way, uh, uh, u is simply, let me first write the, uh, the, uh, the sizes of these matrices are vectors so for example this is 3 by 1 okay and uh, this is 3 by 1 okay and of course then I should also have here um, 3 by 3 right so then um, this multiplication here should give me um, in place of u I should get x so I could make it as 1 0 0 in place of v, I should get y. So I could write it as 0, 1, 0. And in case of z, I should get z by f. So there is already 1 by z here, multiplication of that. So if I simply write here 1 by f, 0, 0. Okay. This would give me the matrix. So that implies, let me call this as just m that gives you the perspective projection okay therefore your m value is equivalent to 100 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 by f okay this is the value of your m Well, uh, so there is actually people would use instead of uh, one more uh, transform, uh, one more modification to the uh, size of this vector x, y, z people would be doing so that they could have a matrix of similar size for few other uh, kinds of transformations similar to perspective, for example, um, something called as orthographic projection <clears throat> and also weak perspective projection which we come uh, to that a later a little later so that you consider that now so in those cases what people would do is let's say instead of x y z okay i would in fact go for x y z one okay that's what they would be doing again m this is for perspective projection so let's write this perspective projection matrix if I go for x, y, z1 instead of this, let's write that out also. So that's most commonly used, although this is what you get in a straightforward way. Okay, u, v, w equal to the matrix here multiplied with x, y, z and 1. What should I get here? Um, First one should be, I should be getting f by z times x, okay. That's, of course, that's nothing but here in this particular context. So simply, there is nothing contributed by the last one. So that would be the last column would simply uh, be all zeros there, okay. So 0, 0, 1 by f, 0. So this is the most commonly used uh, matrix. So essentially, this is... Uh, 3 by 1, this is 3 by 4, right, and this is uh, 4 by 1, so 3 by 1. So that's the most common used matrix for perspective projection is this. So both are correct in their own way, right, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 by f, 0. Okay, uh, yeah, if I don't tell you anything and if you want to um, just mention this matrix, you go for this 4 by 3 by 4 matrix. Okay, this is your perspective projection matrix.
we will uh, revisit this uh, matrix again after some time okay doing after doing few more things we'll come back to this uh, uh, so right now what we will do is uh, we will uh, slightly move on to uh, the vanishing points concept and then we will uh, come back to two other couple of uh, transformations and also to re revisit these matrices okay so let me go back to some of my presentation here okay and again uh, this let me go into i am keeping in the desktop mode and just moving into um, the uh, slides full screen mode okay so this is something we just uh, uh, initiated the discussion in the last uh, zoom session the point here is assume that uh, so this is where this h plane okay and let me uh, enable this pen yeah it's enabled okay so look at this h plane oh, okay no i don't think the pen got enabled um, pen right so look at this h plane here this is where we are getting a perspect the perspective projection of a 3d world into a 2d so this is your for example this is your okay this plane is your z right uh, th that's varying and assume that these are your x and y okay uh, it could be for example you could think of this as x okay this as your y right so you could see here you are looking let's say from this point and then look at where these are you you consider them as the tracks going on here the parallel tracks these these railway tracks which are parallel which should be parallel of course okay and see how they get projected here so how could you see that you just see where this point you you pass it this is your center of projection assume that and you draw a line uh, connecting each point on this parallel line to center of projection and then see um, where that uh, point has an intersection with this plane where you are capturing it or where the 2d projection okay then uh, you could intuitively see that these two lines would in fact have uh, this projection one this okay the another line is having this projection and of course what you would also see here is suppose if you consider another line that could give you something like this okay uh, it might be already intuitive for you that when you have more than two parallel lines all would converge at a single point it's not like uh, they intersect at various points okay so this point at which they all converge or intersect are referred to as vanishing points so now what we are going to uh, try to prove is even um, mathematically also this is not difficult to prove that when you have a uh, parallel lines they all intersect at the same point okay uh, so for example this is another uh, way uh, of course this is a good way you to spot even fake images assume that there are there is one image here you you photoshopped and somebody kept here but assume that these are all parallel lines to be so if you draw the parallel lines okay uh, you, you if you know that this this is this surface or this plane is parallel to this and of course the uh, for this cube the other side whichever is there here will be parallel so if you connect them all they would get all converge to a single point so there here there is another set of parallel lines right that would converge here and of course there mm, there are parallel lines in this direction also but again there is something else here okay they all parallel lines would remain parallel there that we will come back to uh, a little later another interesting point first let's have an intuitive discussion about it and then we will come back to the math part of it is sets of parallel lines sets of parallel lines on the same plane okay suppose you consider an xy plane you have set of one set of parallel lines another set of parallel lines okay these two sets are not uh, any line in one set is not parallel to the other but they are all in the same plane then if you take the so for example this is one example here okay if you assume there is another set of uh, parallel lines here somewhere the locus of all of those things uh, will lie on a straight line okay so that line is called horizon uh, anyway this proof we will not go through it we will just leave it at that point but let's see um, yeah uh, let's see um, how how could we prove that um, 
the if you have uh, so set of parallel lines perspective projection would give you uh, uh, would give you a single vanishing point and they will converge at a single vanishing point that's so that's what we would uh, see okay so we are in 3d we are looking at the parallel lines okay so parallel lines in 3d is what we are going to take a look at here just a minute let me just erase it fully okay so what we are interested here is parallel lines of course we are in the 3d world okay uh, so in the 3d world is what we are going to take a look at it okay now how do you represent a line in 3d is the first question okay so for that hope you did it in some of your math courses or in some other um, course that involves dealing with lines in 3d uh, if not also we will just quickly go through that uh, okay how to do that out so i am making a small switch between these line these uh, x y z coordinates but should not cause you any problem with that okay so suppose you know that a line passes a given parallel line passes through a point x naught y naught z naught okay and let me put it as a vector and uh, um, so then uh, a vector a b c okay that's uh, that's moving in a direction parallel to the line so for example assume that this is my x naught y naught z naught this is one point and then to know the line what i should know in which direction is it moving okay so that assume that that's given by a point a b c so that's basically along the x there is a along y this is b and along z this is c so how do i now know the line so this point now okay this i have the point here so this point should anything should move parallel to this or yeah so you make addition of it okay it should move but this line should always lie parallel to it or in other words i could write that line as um, x naught y naught z naught plus t times a b c where t could vary from minus infinity to plus infinity okay suppose i i have another line which is parallel to this okay which is passing through uh, x1 let's say let's call this as x1 this point as x1 y1 z1 so the what would happen then that line if at all it is parallel okay this line now should move uh, with this value only so right uh, so this point okay when i take for example here this you add this to it so that means you are adding in this direction so right so for example to this 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 is given by x naught y naught z naught to that a scaled value of uh, uh, the t naught so if you are having this way if you are having t positive that would move in this direction you get all those points and of course this point will give t negative and t equal to 0 would give you this point same is true here okay so parallel line is characterized all the parallel lines will be characterized by this vector and any of the points on that vector so let me uh, so another way, way of writing one line is x of t for example is equal to x naught plus a times t i'm just from scalar representation to a uh, from a vector representation i am coming back to a scalar representation similarly y of t will be equal to y naught plus a t sorry y naught plus b t there right so i will write here y naught plus b t and z of t is will give you z naught plus c t so if i take another set of instead of x naught y naught z naught if i take x1 y1 z1 okay for the same values of a and b and c that would be a line parallel to the uh, line that is passing through x naught y naught z naught right okay let's now these are this is how we characterize a line in 3d 
par set of parallel lines in 3D where this could x0, y0. If you change this, it would give you different lines parallel to each other passing through those specific values, right? So that these points we are going to project into uh, 2D projective transformation, uh, perspective transformation. We want to do it. So how do that will be? So we already derived that, right? So for example, your x dash of t, once you project it, you have only x and y. Of course, z would be where you are doing it. Let's say you are taking a snapshot at f. So your z is, of course, that will you give you z prime or z dash. Okay. So x dash of t, how can I write that? Is nothing but uh, x by, uh, no, it's we are calling where we are taking projection, we are calling it as f, right? And uh, that's z value, okay, for which we want to do that into x of t. This is nothing new. I'm just writing whatever uh, uh, we have done here, okay. x prime equal to f by z into x and y prime equal to f by z into y. That's all I'm writing here. So similarly, the new point y prime t is equal to f by z of t into phi of t. Let's substitute. So this is characterizing the set of parallel lines here. X of t, y of t should be in that way. So let's substitute that there to get the value for x prime of t is equal to. For example, in place of x of t, let me substitute that x naught plus a t divided by z of t is z naught plus c t. And then, of course, this whole thing multiplied with f similarly y prime of t equal to uh, y naught plus b t by z naught plus c t times f. That's what you would get there. Now, uh, whether they converge it or not, so for that convergence, as you are increasing, so you want to see as you go far away, right? That means either you go to, uh, so this far away means this is t equal to plus infinity would take you here and here t equal to minus infinity here will take you here. So where they converge. So as t tends to, as t tends to plus or minus infinity, what's going to happen is what we are going to do there, right? As t tends to infinity, the ct value is dominant and z naught you could um, ignore. Same is the case even c tends to minus infinity, t tends to minus infinity as well. That is so, the negative value is so high and you could uh, ignore z. So as t tends to um, plus or minus infinity, I could write x prime of t as same ki the case with x naught plus a t. This x naught I could, I could ignore. So I get here a t by c t into f. Okay. That implies your x prime of t is equal to a by c times f. Similarly, y prime of t is equal to, uh, you have here b t, y naught can be ignored, into c t times f. So you have y naught of t equal to b by c times f right uh, what happened here notice here the x prime and y prime values you are getting as t tends to so let me again just uh, write here as t tends to plus or minus infinity these are the results you are getting look there this has nothing to do with where you started from. So these expressions, so you could see here as t tends to plus or minus infinity, x prime, that means on the projected one, what is the corresponding value for x and y are independent, independent of, independent of x naught, y naught comma z naught. You could have any value. 
so changing this x naught y naught z naught will give you the set of parallel lines so that means all parallel lines okay all parallel lines starting at different points so assume that i am referring as a starting means this initial value that i am keeping here okay these x naught y naught z and that's what i am referring as a starting so all lines uh, starting at different points okay let me call it as x i y i z i will all converge okay will all converge to where do they converge to uh, the values of x and y which are given by k by c times f b by c times f so if i give you the direction uh, in which all these lines are progressing okay or in a way 2d the 2d equivalent is if i give you the slope for example and the point at which you have what's the value of f you could tell where all these set of parallel lines would converge to right so that's why this tells you that this is independent of um, as i mentioned this is independent of x the starting point here and they all converge you could also say where exactly would be the vanishing point there okay hope this is clear um, once one more small thing to be discussed here is what happens okay uh, when c equal to what happens when c equal to 0 well what does that mean c equal to 0 means look at here so c equal to 0 means your z of t right so what does the c equal to 0 means this means your z of t equal to z naught okay uh, it's constant the z of t is going to be a constant value right and then um, these are not defined right uh, so you substitute for example well you can't uh, here itself when the c of t equal to zero okay there is not a single point to which they converge to for example you make zero here x x prime c of t here okay if you look at it that way um, depending on x naught and z naught uh, depending on where they are starting this they, they keep going on and they in fact remain parallel okay so that means are in in other words there is no value x uh, x prime of um, and if you look at here for example so even however far you go x prime of t and uh, y prime of t are uh, they they do not exist right uh, so so any single point of uh, uh, x prime of t and uh, y prime of t this point doesn't exist so they remain parallel okay so z being constant means it's like you take the projection okay where you have your camera uh, and yeah you could uh, so for example you take the railway tracks you take it from the top that you could figure out with some um, uh, bit of uh, uh, taking care into these coordinates you could figure out that this is what would give you the parallel line so parallel lines remain parallel right that's the conclusion so parallel lines remain as parallel okay hope that's clear and uh, with that let me come back to this presentation for a moment and see where what else to be discussed here right these are the set of parallel lines we have discussed okay well before i go to the this is an interesting observation uh, that we could do uh, before we move on to the other two types of transformations right um, this is a standard puzzle uh, you know, uh, your in your childhood or even now people would be asking which line is bigger okay if, if these uh, hope this pen is again on okay uh, if this if these two lines are not drawn um, you feel like intuitively that this line is longer and the interesting thing here is um, uh, you initially might felt that uh, this is the illusion your brain is creating and uh, maybe that's a bad thing but in fact this has its roots on 
how you look at the 3D world in 2D, okay? Because uh, that's how even we are perceiving things. The moment, we, even with the two eyes, you have um, two 2D snapshots, of course, from a different two viewpoint. So look at here this counter. Uh, assume that the image is taken uh, from somewhere here again. I am trying to draw, uh, attempting here to draw 3D in a 2D slide, but that's fine. So what would happen here? If you look at the absolute values of this line and this line, this is the wall, okay? This wall is of course, so the, you could see that ideally this wall and this wall should be of same size, but from where you are taking that, this would, this is how the perspective projection would look like, okay? But if you look at the absolute lengths, what you would be surprised to, not surprised, we are doing it intuitively all the time, okay? This length would be this length. But here you could see this length has this edge would have something like this, okay? Whereas this edge would have something like this. So we constantly, our brain has been trained to interpret this line. The moment you see any picture, this line is larger than this line. So this illusion, in fact, is helping us. It's not uh, uh, something uh, uh, you have a problem with. In fact, that's how we are trying to interpret and this comes from um, perspective projection itself and in uh, uh, so in math these two lines are equal but in fact okay if I could call it so this line is bigger okay uh, particularly in the perspective projection okay so that's as far as the perspective projection is concerned uh, let me let me again come back from here okay and now go to another projection called orthographic projection. So what does this orthographic projection means? You assume that distance from the center of projection is very large, okay? So distance to the center of projection to the uh, center of projection is, how do you know it? Where all these lines would converge, right? So that if it is at somewhere at infinity, okay? So then what would happen? All these lines would remain parallel right and um, so you uh, that is where the x and y values would remain the same okay so this is a good approximation when you are looking at objects that are very far from you okay and this also this orthographic projection is also referred to as parallel projection okay uh, this you could think of it as uh, uh, taking a picture by just keeping your uh, off rail tracks okay on uh, keeping your camera on top of it rather than at any angle to it okay um, so that would give you so let's now try to work out uh, the how the transformation matrix for orthographic projection would look like so let's quickly go through the orthographic projection okay what should happen in an orthographic projection your x dash would remain as x and y dash would remain as y. That's one thing, okay? And uh, what's next? So you assume that your f value, okay? Before, so they are not going to converge anywhere. The parallel lines are not going to converge anywhere. So you are looking at a very, very, very far object. So uh, that means this is something that's tending to infinity, okay? that's infinite so they remain parallel uh, so how do you represent them now okay uh, so that means your u v w what should you get here that you should get it as x y 1 okay so that your x prime would now become x by 1 y prime would become y by 1. That's what you would get there. Let's again now try to write this. Um, 0. So this you want to get here. U, V, W. Okay. That getting multiplied with. Let's start with x, y, z. Uh, I should get here 
x prime is equal to x by um, x prime is equal to x by x prime equal to x correct so i should get here this is equal to 1 0 0 y prime is equal to y 0 1 0 okay and what else uh, i could write of course here 0 0 0 if i am writing it as a 3 by 3 matrix can i write that well not i need here w equal to 1 is what i should get here if you notice here okay i should get so this first element should be x that was fine second element should be y i got it third element should be 1 so can i write here 1 by z no because that become makes this matrix transformation matrix nonlinear. so what should i do now well put 1 here and make this as 1 okay and uh, this has nothing to do with these two things hope you are following and hope this also should give you the reason why if, if you want all these matrices of the similar size okay that should tell you why we had taken a 3 cross 4 matrix here in, in instead of uh, uh, instead of 3 cross 3 matrix for a perspective projection because all these matrices of same size. So if you want me to write m value for an orthographic projection that is now equivalent to 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 and this is 0 0 0 1 okay this is for the matrix for orthograph or for applying orthographic projection so what it tells you if i give you xyz values you simply multiply substitute them here okay and multiply it with this matrix that should tell you u v w okay and that also would eventually should give you what's the x prime and y prime okay just compare this with this matrix of perspective projection okay Something had happened here. Some zero got disappeared. Okay, let's put that zero here. Okay, so what what exactly is uh, okay perspective projection? By the way, uh, yeah. So in in place of one by f, okay, this becomes zero here. Okay, in case of orthographic projection, and this becomes one here. Okay, there are ways also where you further instead of writing it as a 3 by 4 you write uh, instead of this taking as 3 by 1 uvw you take it as a 4 by 1 and you could make in fact orthographic projection as a special case of perspective projection anyway let's not go to that detail right now all you would say here is these are the two uh, numbers that vary for an orthographic projection here you have 0 and here you have 1 that gives you orthographic projection okay now that's so parallel lines remain parallel that's orthographic projection and there is one something else you would be sometimes might be using it that's referred to as weak perspective projection okay this is what you would go through it right now and you would be wrapping up uh, things after summarize and wrap up with this transformation okay let's come back here uh, what does that mean so when do you go for a weak perspective projection is that pay attention here suppose the variations in the height of your object are negligible with respect to the distance at which the object is there from the center of projection then you assume a constant height for this object because that incremental change is so small okay that you could safely neglect that okay so that is when you so what you are going to assume there is for example so far you had x y z and one if you are writing it as 3 by 4 now you go you are going to assume that this z is constant value for the entire object so you don't worry so let's say it's like you are taking the photo of a person standing far 
and within that person okay the uh, height variations uh, from the his nose to the ears is negligible when you are quite far from him let's say few meters right so that means you come back to the expressions of x prime and y prime okay so x prime is how do, how do you define that so we had x prime is equivalent to how do you write that f by f by z right f by z into uh, your x and y prime is f by z times y now you assume here z equal to a constant value okay it means the variations are negligible compared to this f okay so then you assume that z equal to z naught then whatever you get you refer to it as weak perspective projection it's a perspective but you are not allowing uh, any you are ignoring the finer changes so then is you call it as weak perspective projection okay so then what you have here is x prime is equal to f by z naught into x okay so this if you look at here is let s they are referring to the, this is a constant for a given uh, if you are capturing at a constant value an object distance is given so let uh, so and of course let me finish writing this f by z naught into y okay so if you call this as s equal to f by z naught that implies your x prime is s times s times x and your y prime is is uh, s times y okay this is what the relationship so what is happening here in the weak projection there is a simple scaling in x and y happening okay and uh, that's how so you for example let's also try now uh, to uh, write it in terms of u v and w okay and if you write it this way then your x prime is equal to uh, u by w y prime is equal to v by w right that means how that should look like uh, what you should get here for example x and y are there s is common you divide with it so you take here 1 by s suppose if you get it okay that would serve the purpose so that means you s times x so in order to get from here x prime what would you do x divided by 1 by s would give you s x y prime the same thing y divided by 1 by s would give you s times y okay so that's what is our objective to get let's now try to achieve it again a 4 by 3 matrix where here you have x y z 1 okay and uh, what should I get now? Uh, as I discussed, I should get here x, right? So I, there should be 1 here, 0, 0, 0. And in the next one, I should get y. That means 0, 1, 0, 0. Then I should get uh, 1 by s, which means 0, 0, 0, 1 by s okay that's all so hope let me just cross check with whatever is here that's correct okay so that means i could let me just uh, for the sake of completion write it as the matrix this is your matrix of 4 by 3 so the matrix for weak perspective projection is 1 2 3 zeros 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 by s what is s yes you have written here uh, so for example s equal to f by z naught okay so this is your the matrix 4 by 3 matrix for weak perspective projection okay hope these things are clear uh, and uh, let me come back here summarizing all three camera projections that we have discussed so far okay xyz perspective projection you get 
f by z times x f by z times y in weak perspective projections the z you are assuming to be constant so z naught z naught okay matrix x i am not mentioning here but if you want you just uh, keep writing these matrices as well for yourself okay all the three matrices okay and orthographic projection x y would remain as x y z would map to x that's a parallel projection as well okay so this is something nice thing if you are interested in art okay you could do it so this is an example of perspective projection you draw on a paper piece of paper okay this again i captured some of the names were given there as a title for these slides so you could get lot of such paintings okay why not you make something for your friends um, where uh, figure out how to draw it so here when you look at on the paper you won't uh, see that as a meaningful beautiful painting but the moment you you put the light in the right direction and you keep a the right surface okay this is what okay probably you need to do some um, yeah, inverse engineer reverse engineering here to get uh, this first and then give it as a friend to your friend both this and this painting as a gift and unless they keep it there then once they keep it there they could see this nice painting projected onto that surface okay so this in a way this is two this you could think of it is something that is there on 3d and this is your perspective projection now you are going to do the reverse of it okay those are th these are such nice paintings okay another painting here where you could see the tree very nicely uh, on that cube that you are keep on that uh, cylindrical shape that you are keeping in the middle okay at another uh, uh, anamorphic art they call it okay this is something you could try these are nice uh, 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 applications you could think of okay yeah, this is a nice hard work that you could think of rather than applications. Anyway, perspective projection is uh, almost everywhere. The moment you are getting uh, all shape from, yeah, let me come back to the mode here. Right. So, uh, you have this perspective projection everywhere. For example, shape from stereo. You have two images. The moment you are take, the moment you have, you are interpreting something based on images. Okay. Now just a minute. Let me come back here. Okay, just put it in the read mode. That should be fine to come back here. Okay, the moment you are taking pictures, that means that's nothing but images you are taking. It's a 2D projection of the 3D world. That's a perspective projection. In fact, if you are doing shape from stereo or shape from shading, okay, or shape from texture, um, or shape from some orientations, all these things come under are using perspective projection. In fact, so this is a very important concept. So with this. We are done with this uh, class and then uh, we'll see you in the next lecture. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye.